the portfolio to me is the heart and soul of the social action class. It's 40% of their grade. So it's a huge part of their grade, almost 50%. And it's where the integration happens. The portfolio has a lot of things going on. I, I need to know, are they grasping the course concepts? Do they understand that? Because if they, if they don't do that, referring to the hero and educator of Paulo Ferrer, it's just blah, blah, blah. It's, there's no critical thinking going on. So just action. It's not the critical reflection piece. This student starts with power defined. That makes me happy when I see that they're using the text. They're given a definition of power, which most people don't have a clear definition. So she's saying, this is what it means. I wanted to get at it from the very beginning. I'm trying to undermine this idea that they can't make a difference, that change is not possible. And that the tools for which change are possible are not things that they can relate to. And one of them is power. You can hear the student says, I have negative feelings about power. I always thought about it in terms of oppression, which I think is actually mostly true with my students, predominantly 70% students of color, mostly working class students. They see power in terms of oppression and she doesn't want to be power hungry. She says, I'm a non-confrontational person and I wouldn't define myself as powerful. And then she goes on to the text again and says, but I'm mistaken by the works of King and by this other Marianne Williams quote, that I can see power differently. You see they're grappling with the text, relating it to themselves, and then importantly, connecting it to their campaign and to other campaigns. She connects it on the second page, Tembladour, class of 11. Christopher Tembladour spoke on the importance of leveraging collective power by building alliances. Now she's taking knowledge that other students have had, not Martin Luther King, which is nice on some level, important on some level, but here's another student educating her about how to use power and how to build power. They're taking knowledge, applying it to the, their campaign and ultimately driving it towards how they can use this knowledge to get the target to say yes, because that's the ultimate goal, to get the target to say yes. So how can they use the knowledge to move forward their campaign with the ultimate goal of winning? This is also a chance by doing this to see, are they doing the work? I would say a third of the students by class 10 have not done anything. The portfolio becomes a check because they turn in a log too on, are they doing anything? I expect a third of the class not to do anything, even though I'm encouraging them because they're not used to being active, engaged people in a classroom. I, I, I just encourage them at this point and, and, and lay the expectations. We've been firing all semester. She goes on to describe the flyering. She again uses another student to talk about the importance of having connections with other resources centers and how her campaign is doing that. She talks about her organizational wrap. Remember I asked them to start after this class, after class 10 that we're gonna talk about. I don't just say to them, do classroom presentation. I say, who's gonna do them? What time are the classes? And show me that because that shows specificity, because otherwise they'll say, yeah, we're doing them, but they're not doing them. And I would say, I want to give you this one example of the complexity of thinking. She says, I'm reluctant to label them as opponents. She's talking about the president and the vice president, particularly President Papazian and the vice presidents that we've met with, who are powerful, uh, she calls them powerful oppositionists to our demands. She doesn't call them opponents. She doesn't call them the enemy, she created that language herself, powerful oppositionists. While they have rejected our demands, they've expressed their shared commitment to house every student in need. She says, I'm reluctant to call them opponents, as I do believe that ultimately we want the same thing to house students. But I want to show you the complexity of their thinking, of her thinking, in comparison to, I think, if you're not trained, which a lot of students have that righteous anger, and that's totally fine. But without some reflection about our powerful opposition. It, it, it is helpful in the process of bringing about change because she's not posing them as an enemy. She's not saying these are enemies that have to be defeated and they're going to take them down at all costs. But they realize their shared humanity and that this is a complex situation. And it doesn't mean they're not going to stop pushing. She's going to keep pushing. But she recognizes them as people who are not there yet, but they're going to get there. That's a, a, a huge insight. I turn it in three times. It just works for my grading schedule. I know when it's coming and it's like an exam. It usually takes me a week to do. 
to, to read them all. I give them extensive feedback on what they're saying, of course, and, and giving them insight and examples for them. But they turn it in sets of three. It's usually one through three, four through seven. So it's four on the second time. And then eight through 10. They turn them in at the first third of the class, the second third, and then the end. The first portfolio is not very good because they just haven't done this integration of academic and coursework. So I tell them, okay, the second one I get, if it's better than the first one, let's say you get a C on the first and an A on the second, I will combine the A and the C to get a B for the, and I'll call that the first. And then you get an A on the second one. So you're at an A minus. And again, I'm encouraging them to do it rather than punish them because they haven't done this before, this integration.